Hi, a few months ago we managed to get some DOS games running natively on this Arduino compatible processor board, which uses the unique and interesting Vortex 86 EX CPU. You really should watch that video first, there's a link in the whatchamacallit, but to recap, we built this adapter to allow us to plug an ISA sound card in, as required by most DOS games, then ran a bunch of benchmarks on it to check it worked. One thing we noticed though was that performance in many games, notably Doom and Quake, wasn't very good for a supposedly 300 MHz processor. We theorised that it might be because the graphics card that it comes with, this mini PCI Express card, was acting as a bottleneck. But as the card connects to a standard mini PCI Express connector, that gives us access to all kinds of weird and wonderful graphics hardware. Today we're going to be testing some of these options. Let's get started. This video is brought to you by the good people at PCBWay, who have very kindly supplied circuit boards for all of my projects for over two years now. You can get 10 PCBs for only $5, and as you get $5 off your first order that basically makes them free, you just pay shipping. You can also get assembly services for as little as $30 for up to 20 boards, and they'll even source all your components for you. I've been using them since long before they even sponsored me, and their work has always been top notch. They also now offer very reasonably priced low volume CNC machining and 3D printing services, and lots of other stuff like injection moulding and sheet metal fabrication, so hit them up if any of that sounds useful to you. The link's in the video description. Now obviously the fact that this only comes with a mini PCI Express slot rather than a full sized one would normally kind of limit us to what kind of graphics cards we put in here. There aren't many mini PCI Express graphics cards on the market, but there is a bit of a janky solution for that. You see, you can actually buy mini PCI Express extenders that turn the mini PCI Express slot into a full size one. This lets us plug in any full size PCI Express graphics card, and as you can imagine this gives us a lot of different options. So first we need to power it up. I'm going to use this board that I built last time because that has a convenient power adapter here that provides all the necessary voltages. Yeah, there we go. Now we install this slightly jank PCI Express to USB adapter. Wire that up to the PCI Express adapter. I don't have many random PCI Express video cards lying about. It's a NVIDIA Quadro... what is it? FX 1700. It's a little bit of an older card, but it's, <laughs> it'll be plenty fast enough for the, uh, I think it's a 300 MHz 486 class processor in this board. So uh, <laughs> also handily, it doesn't need powered externally. It uh, gets all its power from the PCI Express port. So that will be fine. The module gets powered by this little pin header I've got here, which connects to a floppy cable. And the PCI Express adapter gets powered by this separate four pin Molex connector here. Okay. So I need to connect the graphics card up to my monitor. All right, everything's wired up. Uh, hopefully it won't explode. Oh, the graphics card fan turned. Oh, look, look. Ah, okay. Wow, that works. Uh, hang on, I don't have a keyboard plugged in. I can't do anything. <laughs> Let me just reboot it. So, quick time dial. Can't remember how quickly it ran last time. All right, that, that actually seemed to be running slightly better than last time. Last time we got 27.3 uh, frames per second. So surprisingly enough, slightly faster. I, I assumed that the CPU would be the bottleneck here, but seems like the graphics card has a bit of a role to play there too. And Doom's running nice and quickly. 60 frames a second. Wow. Okay. So this is interesting, actually. Last time we noticed Doom and Quake on stock uh, Vortex 86 graphics card got suspiciously similar scores. Um, now, we speculated last time that this is because it was hitting a limit of the graphics card and that that was just as many frames as it could push per second. And it looks like we've confirmed this theory because, you know, theoretically, Quake should run a lot slower than Doom. And if you look at what we're getting out of the Quadro, which presumably isn't as limited as the stock VGA card, we're getting a much faster score for Doom compared to its Quake score. And, you know, for Quake, we're still getting a bit faster than the Vortex 86. So this would imply that these scores are limited by the graphics card, but these scores are limited by the processor. So yeah, interesting. Now, unfortunately, this Quadro graphics card, as we said earlier, isn't really appropriate for this kind of machine, because although it's nice and fast and it supports a load of Visa modes and everything, it doesn't have drivers for Windows 98. There aren't really very many PCI Express graphics cards that work on Windows 98. And uh, unfortunately, this just isn't one of them. However, I might have resolution to that. Instead of extending the mini PCI Express port out to a full-size PCI Express port, you can actually instead bring it out to a PCI slot, or in this case two PCI slots. Um, this is because basically PCI and PCI Express are mostly the same, and you can actually convert back and forward between them. This just has a PCI Express to PCI bridge chip on it. This is a much more period-appropriate slot 
for the kind of processor that's in this thing. But let's see if we can get anything to work through this. As the graphics card, I'm going to use this S3 Verge DX, which is a pretty crappy 3D accelerator. It is a very good 2D card, like it's very, very compatible with just about everything. So let's try this and let's see where we get to. I'm not confident that this will work. I think the BIOS might need to have special support for PCI Express to PCI bridges, but Core Boot, which the BIOS this use, certainly does support PCI bridges. It's just whether or not the support's compiled into the BIOS that's in here. So yeah, let's boot her up and see what happens. Let's power on. Oh, something. Hey, look at that. It'd be interesting to see how this particular PCI card performs in Doom and Quake. Let me just run them. 57.14. So that's interesting, actually very similar scores between the Quadro and the Verge. Yeah, that would imply that maybe the Verge is sort of slightly graphics card limited for DOS Doom, but like it's very CPU limited for DOS Quake. Um, it's interesting that the Verge DX is a very old graphics card and it's outperforming the Vortex 86 VGAs. Maybe we can get more performance out of the Vortex 86 VGA by tweaking the VGA BIOS or something like that, I don't know. But that's interesting, interesting. Now the more eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that we still have one PCI slot left. Now I think you know what I'm going to try next, don't you? That's right, we're going to stick a Voodoo in it. Now, this is a 3D graphics card that's much more sort of period appropriate for the kind of processor we have here. Let, let's see what we can do. Unfortunately, no, it did not work. The moment we go to 3D mode, we get nasty corruption on the screen. This is quite common when running Voodoo cards on faster clock processors, but I didn't think this one would be fast enough. Never mind, we can underclock it using this program provided by DMNP called 86 Clock, which hopefully should be slow enough. Geo, quick. Oh, oh, here we go. All right, look at that. Oof, seems like quite a slow frame rate. All right, well, we'll do a, we'll do a benchmark. Oh, hang on, it's a bit faster in the demo for some reason. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it seems to slow down the moment there's an enemy on the screen, which is not very good. I'm guessing a lot of that's just because of the, the fact that we've had to underclock the processor so much. All right, it's now a couple of months later, and uh, thanks to my brother visiting, say hi. Hi. He's lent me his, well, a slightly more substantial graphics card, shall we say. So, as before, we have the PCI Express riser coming over here, and we have <laughs> a GTX 3080. So, uh, RTX. Sorry, yeah. RTX 3080. I don't, know, I don't play modern games. So, <laughs> it's funny when you compare, like, this is the computer, this is the graphics card. <laughs> <laughs> Must be feeling pretty inadequate right now. Yeah, let's uh, let's see if it works. <laughs> the ultimate bottleneck. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh, something's happening. Hey, there we go. All right, we're we're RTX 3090 on a 300 megahertz. 3080. Sorry, 3080. <laughs> Not made of money. Right. Um. All right. We'll just do the same test. Dos Doom. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going pretty fast. It looks about the same as what it ran on the Quadro FX 1700, though. Wow, there isn't a calculator on my phone. The, your phone doesn't have a calculator. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Samsung. 60.13. Oh, it's actually worse than the Quadro. Yeah. Uh -huh. Quick then. Nice and fast. Fans aren't even spinning up in the 3080 at all. 32.8 frames per second. That is exactly the same as the Quadro. So yeah, I would say that we're pretty much CPU bottlenecked. The last card, we're going to go back to Mini PCI Express. And this is a card based on the SM750 chipset. And it's sort of aimed at um, like servers where you don't really need a full graphics card. You just need something to get an operating system installed and then you'll probably never look at anything on it ever again. So they're super cheap, super small and pretty inconsequential. But I wonder how well they cope with DOS games. Might be interesting. Of course, the really good thing about it being this small is it can just go straight into the slot on the back of the 86 Duino. So no need for any more janky adapters. And if this turns out to be a good card, maybe it would be worth using instead of the standard one. Okay, let's see. Oh, good. Cool. Start with Doom. I think this is faster than the stock card. 62. Not bad at all. 32.9. Now that is significantly better than the stock card. All right, so it does look like this SM750 based card is going to give decent performance, but the question is, does it support some more obscure graphics modes? We'll start with some Visa modes. 1280 by Let's try that. I mean, it's going slow, but it does support it, so that's a good sign. I mean, uh, the processor just isn't fast enough to push this many pixels. Uh, let's maybe try an EGA game. This is Monkey Island, the EGA version. Yeah, this, this seems fine. It's playing very smoothly. All the colors look about right. I'll try Monkey Island in CGA mode next. 
looks promising so far. Enjoy the awful CGA graphics now. I don't know if they're converted automatically or not, or if they just didn't spend much time on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that sunset, specifically designed to show off all the majesty of the colours and the dithering and yeah. Along comes CGA to spoil the party. Alright, Alley Cat, that's a super old game. Looks okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with this. I'm not quite sure what you're meant to be doing in Alley Cat, to be honest. And just stuff just seems to happen. Sort of like the OG Untitled Goose game, I suppose. Even uh, Windows 98 seems to be working reasonably well with this graphics card. Uh, I've had to use the VBE MP 9X driver, which is sort of like a generic Visa driver for Windows 98, but um, it's running at 1280 by 102 for the native resolution of this monitor. Don't imagine it's going to play games very well though, because there's no 3D acceleration under Windows. Okay, Unreal. Uh, no, no, it's not working terribly well. Yeah, we're getting single digit frames per second here. Not really playable. Um, but maybe like a 2D Windows game. All right, here's StarCraft. Uh, and certainly the intro FMV seems to be playing okay. I mean, uh, everything seems to be moving at a reasonable frame rate. So yeah, you might be able to get away with playing Windows 98 games as long as they're not 3D games. Looks like StarCraft works reasonably well. Alright, so that's pretty much all the testing done. Um, here's the final results. You can see that all of the replacement cards performed more or less the same, and certainly a lot better than the stock Vortex 86 VGA card that comes with the EX. So uh, it's definitely worth upgrading if you can. So overall, what conclusions can we draw from these experiments? Well, firstly, yes, you can connect an RTX 3080 up to an Arduino, but you probably shouldn't because there are no 3D drivers for it, and on 2D stuff it performs worse than a $20 server card. Also, while while you can get a 3DFX Voodoo working on it, you have to hamstring the processor so much that it probably isn't worth the effort. It only ran at 14.6 frames per second, and I actually reran DOS Quake with the underclock processor, and even it got 20.5. So there must be some kind of bottleneck to do with the Voodoo. Maybe tweaking the PCI settings in the BIOS would improve that, but I'll save that for another video, perhaps. Maybe the Voodoo 2 or 3 would do better, but given how much bigger full-size PCI cards are compared to the Arduino, it just isn't a practical option for anything except mad experiments. The $20 SM750 server card on the other hand works really well as it actually beats all the other cards we tested in games you might actually want to play on this board and it's small enough to fit in the mini PCIe socket without any janky adapters. I highly recommend these cards to anyone looking to upgrade the performance of their Vortex 86 EX based board. Well that's about it for this video. If you liked it then thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment etc and uh, thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time. Thank you.